Hello everyone and welcome. In this tutorial I will teach you how to make a line trace and perform some action when we hit some actor or a specific component in our game. Let me show you one example. I have this simple door here. So if I press E in this blue sphere, I'm going to destroy the sphere. So if I press E on the door, nothing will happen. So I'm interacting only with one component of this blueprint. Now I can also interact with the whole actor. Let me show you now. Now when I press E, in any location when this actor is, so regardless of here, here or here, I'm going to interact with the whole actor. So if I press E, something happens and in this case I'm destroying this actor. Okay, so let me show you how I've done this. Let's get started. Let's open the content drawer and I have this main folder. I'm putting all my actors here and I have this actors folder. Let's create a brand new blueprint. So blueprint class actor and let's call this door2. Open it up. So let's add static mesh first. So type static mesh in the components tab. So I have this static meshes assets. Select the static mesh and assign it over here. Okay, compile and save. Now let's add one more component. So I'm gonna type here sphere. We can attach this to the door. Let's rename it for now. So door underscore static mesh and sphere. Now I'm going to put the sphere when there is a knob here, like a door knob. I'm going to rescale it for 0.5 and I'm going to change the material to something like this blue maybe. Okay, now this is going to be it for now. Now let's drag and drop the door in the level. So door 2. So here I have this first person character, except I have removed the hands, so I have only this capsule and the camera. So I can move around like this. Okay, now let's open the content drawer. So I have this main and interfaces. We're going to use interface for this video. We are not going to use casting because casting is bad for performance. So make sure you avoid using casting if you want your game to be performant. So right click, blueprints, interface. I'm gonna call this interact underscore interface. So open it up. We're going to create one function. So it's going to be actor interact. And let's create another one. This is going to be component interact. So we have interface to interact with the actor and with component. We can close this now. So I'm here in the first person character. Find the empty space and right click and type keyboard. So I'll select any of these. So you can select this input in the top right corner. You can press either F. So it automatically assigns to be F. So when we press the F key, something will happen. Now what we need to do is to take the first person camera. Now we are going to create a line trace. So we need to get the world location of the camera. So get world location. So right click here and type line trace by channel. So when we press F, we're going to perform a line trace, which is going to start from the first person camera. Now let's create the end line trace. So drag a pin from here and type get world rotation. I'm gonna make some space here like this. 
So from the get world rotation, we're going to need a forward vector. So get forward vector. And from here, we can multiply it. So type multiply. And right click on this pin here. So we have to convert it to float. And we can make it, for example, 500. So what we are doing now is from the first person camera, which is this one, from here, when you press F, we are performing a line trace. And anywhere we are rotating the camera, we are looking forward in 500 units, we are going to hit the line trace. So we have to add this. So from this pin, you can type plus. Put this get world location like this. And this is going to be the end of the line trace. So for the draw debug type, click on this one and click it for duration. So now when I play the game, when I press F, we see line trace from our camera in 500 units from us. If you go back to our third person character, and you can type here, for example, 3000. Now when I play the game, if I press F, it's 3000 units long, the line trace. So this is the, this number. How far away you want to perform a line trace. Since we are interacting with objects close to us, we can make it 500 for now. Okay, now come over here. So from return value, Drag a pin and type branch. So right click and type print string. This is going to let us know if we hit something. So when I go to the game, if I press F, if we hit something, we see this message on the screen. And if you don't, don't hit something, nothing's gonna happen. So every time when you hit something, you see the message. So this is working properly. Let's go back to our blueprint. We can delete this now. Now from this out hit, drag a pin and break hit results. We can expand this. So here we have hit actor and hit component. Usually other tutorials, they're gonna teach you how to drag a pin and cast to, I don't know, some object, for example, door two or cast to third person character. So this is very bad. Never use this casting for line trace because it's not good for performance. When you hover over the node, the node is telling you itself. Okay, so delete this. So if you remember, when you open this interact interface, we have actor interact and component interact. Now let's call it right click and type actor interact. So this is the one actor interact message. So if it's true, if you hit something in the game, we can interact with that actor. And also right click. So component interact. So these two interfaces are coming from this one. I will show you now how to use it in a second can put this on the side. So from the true, we can either hold down S and left click to call a sequence or right click and type sequence. So this means we are going to execute these two pins immediately. So this and this. So first we're going to execute this and then this in a quick succession, one after each other. Okay, now, so if you want to interact with the actor from hit actor, drag a pin and put it over here. And from hit component, what you have to do is to type is valid, this question mark. So from this pin over here, 
So this means we are checking if the component we want to interact, it's still in the game, if it's still valid. So this will prevent our game from crashing or from errors. And if that component is still valid in the game, then we can interact with this component, but we are not dragging a pin from component, but from the actor. So let me just make this a bit tidier. I can just close this down. I can make like this readout nodes. So from here, I can do like this. And the code is much more cleaner. So again, when we press F, we're getting the location of the camera. And from that location, in 500 units, wherever we are turning with the camera, we are hitting something. And if we hit something, then we can interact with the actor and with component. But now we have to code this within the actor so we can perform some action. Now, if you want to interact with a component, we have to do one more thing. So from this pin here, so if you drag a pin from here, it's the same like you're dragging pin from here. So from here, we can type has tag. So component has tag. So if this component is still in the game, and if this component has a tag of interact, then we can interact with this actor. So call a branch. So from is valid, we're checking if this component has a tag, and then we can interact with this component successfully. Now let's go back to our door too. So we want to interact with this blue sphere, right? So select this blue sphere on the top right corner, you can type tag, and we have component tags. Click on this plus and type the same name like in the line trace over here. So it has to match. So we have here interact. And now we are going to successfully interact only with this component if you want. Now let's go to the event graph in this door. I'm going to delete this now. Now go to the class settings and we have to implement this interface. So this is the interface we want to implement. So interact underscore interface with these two functions. Back to our door. So class settings and add here interact underscore interface. On the left side, we have component interact and actor interact. So let's double click on this. So component and actor. Now let's call a print string. I'm going to duplicate the print string. So I'm going to type here component interact and over here actor interact. Now again, from the first person character, we are performing a line trace. And if we have this blueprint interface implemented, which in this case we have, this is the one, we are going to call this blueprint code. So for now we are having only print string. And if you are interacting with a component, and if that component has a tag of interact, and if it's still in the game, this component, then we can use this blueprint interface. And in the door two, component interact, we can use this interface. Now let's try it out. Now I'm pressing F, we have this line trace. Now if I hit this door, it says actor interact. Now if I press F in the door knob, we are interacting with the both of them at the same time because this is one whole actor. What we have to do is go to the door, disconnect the actor interact, and now we can interact only with the component. Now if I go back to the game, if I press F, component interact. Now if I press F in the door, nothing happens. Now if you want to destroy this component, for example, let's go back to the blueprint. 
I'm gonna delete this Princeton for now and drag and drop in the level. We can right click and convert to validated cat. So this is another checking if this component is still in the game. So if it is, drag a pin and type destroy component. Now if I play the game, if I press F, nothing happens. But if I hit this blue sphere, I'm destroying it. Now if you want to destroy the whole actor, you can simply right click, destroy actor, compile and save. Now if you hit this door, if you hit any part of the door, you're going to destroy the door. You can use this technique for anything you want. For example, you can come over here, you can press F to open the door by interacting with the doorknob only. Or you can open the whole door by interacting with the, any part of the door. So it's up to you. Okay, this is going to be it for this video. If you want to learn more optimization techniques, and if you want to learn how to create your own games from scratch using optimized blueprints, check the link in the description. I have the whole course for that. Thanks for watching.